24 hours after the suicide bombings, Afghans are still counting their losses. More than 100 people have died. Hundreds more are injured. In the next 10 minutes, we'll bring you the most comprehensive ground report on the situation in Afghanistan. Our correspondent in Kabul, Anas Malik, is standing by to give us a live update. He's been going to the Kabul airport every day to bring you what's happening. He was there at the site of the blast a day before that blast happened. He was there yesterday night, and he's back with us tonight. Anas, we'll come to you in just a bit. First, let's bring our viewers up to speed with what has happened today and what we know about the attack. Just a short while ago, the U.S. Defense Department issued a statement. It says there was only one suicide bomber and there was no second explosion. The Islamic State says it was behind this attack, more specifically the ISIS-K or the Islamic State Khorasan. This is a regional version of the ISIS. You could say the Pakistani version of the ISIS. We'll bring you a special report on this later in the show. And here's something worth noting. Thursday was the deadliest day for American forces in Afghanistan in more than a decade. A total of 13 American soldiers were killed in action. Hours after this attack, there were reports of another explosion in Kabul. This was a controlled explosion by the U.S. military. They were destroying some ammunition. But the terror threat is not yet over. Reports say terrorists could target the airport again. American intelligence input suggests that there could be at least seven ISIS bombers on the loose. They left from a mosque in central Kabul after Friday prayers today. Journalists have been asked to stay away from the airport. They could be on target next. What are the U.S. and its allies doing about all of this? They're hastening the withdrawal. They want to leave as soon as possible. They're leaving Afghans behind, those who might need help. Spain, Canada, Belgium, the Netherlands, Australia, they've all ended their operations. France, the United Kingdom and Italy were supposed to end their evacuations by this evening too. The United States is expected to carry on, but they have only four more days left to airlift everyone. And there are thousands still waiting outside. The longer they're made to wait, the higher the risk of another terrorist attack. What happens when the Americans leave? Will the evacuation stop? Will the Taliban control the Kabul airport then? No, says Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He says Turkey will run the Kabul airport. And that this offer has come from the Taliban themselves. President Erdogan said Turkey is still considering the offer. What about India's evacuation efforts? New Delhi today issued a statement. Most Indian citizens in Afghanistan have been evacuated, they said. India has been able to fly out more than 40 Afghan Hindus and Sikhs. So there is no immediate cause for alarm. But New Delhi is concerned about the situation in Afghanistan, in Kabul. What about the Taliban? What are they doing? Issuing condemnation and investigating the terrorist attack. This is what things have come to, really. A terror group has taken power and is talking about ending the cycle of evil. Conducting an investigation. What have they found? Nothing that the world doesn't already know about. The blasts were a result of the security breach at the gate that was controlled by the U.S. forces. That's what the Taliban have been able to establish so far. That's what they've stated. Remember, they don't have a government. And no proper mechanisms in place to deal with the aftermath of a terror strike but they're acting the part. They're holding press conferences, talking to foreign diplomats, tweeting propaganda videos, even dishing out unsolicited advice. Can you really be an international player without commenting on Kashmir and, and advising India? So the Taliban are doing it. It's epic. A Taliban spokesperson has said that India and Pakistan should sit across the table to talk about Kashmir and New Delhi should have a positive attitude. This is a terror group speaking. Who asked the Taliban what India should do in Kashmir? The Pakistani press. It's crazy, it's twisted, it's unbelievable. But then again, in a post-COVID world, nothing seems like a stretch. So Pakistani media is broadcasting Taliban advice to India on Kashmir. They may also want to report on what's happening in Kabul. The Taliban beating up civilians right in the middle of the road. This is the real face of the Taliban. This is what Afghans are fleeing. Look at this carefully. The United Nations put a number to their desperation. 500,000, they said. The UN said up to 500,000 Afghans could leave the country in the weeks ahead. Tens of thousands have already left by air and by road, even on foot, walking hundreds of miles. Many of them end up at the Pakistan border. Now look at these pictures. 
a sea of Afghans. This check post is in Spin Boldak, a tsunami of refugees trying to enter Pakistan. This is Islamabad's reward for driving a country to ruin. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.